Welcome. In this video, I am going to talk about boilerplate code, which was generated by Spring Initializer. We have some files that were created. For example, this file that I've shown you in the last video. This is an entry file for Spring Boot application. And what makes this entry file is this annotation, Spring Boot application. Before we talk about annotation, I want to go through some of the main files that makes this Spring Boot project. We also have this build.gradle file. I'm going to open that file. Now, this file is basically for Gradle to build a Spring application. When we take a look at the Spring Initializer, here, remember, we choose Gradle project over Maven. Historically, Java application developers have had a few options for project build tools, and some of them are basically gone for good reason. We have Maven and Gradle. Apache Maven, which is a popular and solid choice for building automation system, it has been around for quite some time, having had its beginning in 2002 and becoming a top level project at the Apache Software Foundation in 2003. On the other hand, Gradle is another popular option for building Java virtual machine projects. First released in 2008, Gradle leverages a domain specific language to produce a build.gradle file that is both minimal and flexible. Gradle allows developers to choose either Groovy or Kotlin or Java program language for DSL. It also offers several features meant to reduce your time waiting for a project to build such as incremental compilation of Java classes, compile avoidance for Java, a dedicated daemon for project compilation. The main question you might be thinking right now is which one you should choose, Maven or Gradle? Well, your choice of build tools may not sound like much of a choice at this point. Maven's more rigid declarative approach keep things incredibly consistent from project to project, environment to environment. If you follow the Maven way, few issues typically crop up, leaving you focus on your code with little fussing with the build. As a build system built around programming scripting, Gradle also occasionally has issues digesting initial release of a new language versions. The Gradle team is responsive and typically dispatches these issues with great haste. Let's take a look at what we have in gradle.build file. This file is going to tell Gradle about the dependency, plugins, and some metadata for your applications. Right on top, you can see we have the plugins. Right now, we have the Spring Boot and Spring Dependency Management plugin and a Groovy, which is our programming language for this project. We have this group, version, and source compatibility, which is a JDK version. Then here we have a dependencies. So we have some implementation like Spring Framework, Boot Spring Starter Web, a Groovy programming language, and then Spring Boot DevTools, which will help us to build our project and do the live reload when we change the code. We have this testing dependency. Then this test tells that we use JUnit platform for all the testing. If you look at the source folder, we have a main directory, and within that we have a Groovy and a resources directory. Now let's go inside the Groovy, and we have this package here. When I open up this file, Spring Boot application require this annotation, Spring Boot application. And this annotation will go inside the main file for your Spring Boot application. Let's go over some of the key points that we talked about in this video. So we've examined some of the first class choices. You have creating a Spring Boot application, which is this file. Whether you prefer to build your projects within Maven or Gradle, write code in Java, Kotlin, or create project from a web interface provided by Spring Initializer or its command line partner. The Spring Boot CLI, you have the full power and easing of Spring Boot at your fingertips without compromise. You can also work with Spring Boot projects using an impressive variety of IDs, such as IntelliJ IDEA, which is going to be our ID for the rest of this series.
Before wrapping up this video, I want to mention that we haven't really gone through the whole project yet. Like all these files have some meanings in our Spring Boot application, but we haven't talked about them because they're not required as of now. First, let's get our hands dirty with some code, building REST APIs. Then when we need to talk about certain aspect of Spring Boot using any file in the project, then we will jump into the file and explain that. All right, so next video is going to how we can create a simple REST API using Spring Boot.